side, same thing. Number eight on the glow plugs, eight, eight, eight. The very front one's number nine. And over on the other side is number, the back is number nine. Now this little cover's got this little bracket broken here, so we will have to weld that up before it goes back on. The other end is here, so that holds this cover here, keeping your fuel line safe. I don't know what other purpose it would have, but it's about all that was there. It's got the glow plugs unhooked. Then we've got, towards the front side, this bolt holds the uh, glow plug wiring. Then going to the back, it's got the other one sticks over this long stud here. It looks like that's going to be all. Pull the wires off as they come along off the injectors and then wiring harnesses about off the motor. So over here, got all that wiring out of the way, tucked it out from underneath the fuel lines. Now on the back, got the uh, other side up pipe heat shield out of the way. Pulled that bolt there, it held the uh, transmission dipstick. That one over there held the uh, transmission breather line bracket. Now I need the up pipes out of the way, but I don't have a 12 point number 12 mil socket, so I'm gonna have to find one of those. Um, moving on to something else, I guess. We'll work on the, the PCV system. Get that out of there. Get that hose off the top of the engine. Then uh, next will be some fuel lines out of the way. But um, probably want to do want to do the uh, intake Y bridge there first, probably. So Y bridge right there. Get the bolts out of that. That will get a little more room up there on the top before we start messing with fuel hoses and fuel lines. I mean, so we'll go from there. So the return lines. right to dark you can see right there there's a little tiny clip or pin you have to pry that out just a wee bit not too far so it doesn't break then this top piece has to pry up and then it can slide off of the injector return so once it's slid up like that then you can pull the thing right off but it has to pry apart like that not like that one there, which I just split all the pieces. So I have to buy a whole new return line for this side here. The whole thing is going to have to be new, but anyway. They were getting pretty brittle, so probably good to buy both sides new and throw it away. So I guess we'll have to now. Better not to be too cheap, otherwise we've got to come in here and do it all again later. So, yeah, pry that little clip out. Say on the side, you gotta hold it out at the same time. You pry this out, so I got two of these little picks. One of them just hold the side just a wee bit, and the other one's gotta get in here and move that up. So, can't video doing it, but that's how it works anyway. So, got all those return line clips off. Um, ended up the side, and I'm just gonna buy new ones anyway. So, I just broke the little tab out of the side of all of them, it makes them much easier to deal with. Just the little tab sticking in the side. I think it's easy. No, nope, you can't see it on that one. I'll go around here. Right there. Come on. Right there. So, it's got a big square hole right there in front of my finger. Just broke the tab right out and then pull this top piece up. And that way, since I'm buying new ones anyway, then it won't matter because those are going in the trash. So, makes that a lot easier. This side here is all ready to pull off. That's the driver's side. Coming over here to the passenger side, going to pull. Hold this off here. This whole little bracket's gonna end up going in the trash. I think it doesn't need to be there because I'm not gonna have the fuel filter here anymore. So these, both of these lines will be non-existent. It's gonna go up from the other side and straight to the pump. Only thing coming over here will be this return line here. I'm gonna go back right there. And it goes back and ties in right here in the, to the return rail or whatever you call it there, the return line. So that's going to stay, but both of these lines will be gone. 
So we're going to start here in the front, pull the alternator. So we're going to go with this bolt, that bolt, or not, I guess. And there's a bolt right there under the idler. And we'll see how wiggly it is. Probably one more hiding someplace, but no, it looks like that's it. So we'll pull those three out and see if that alternator bracket comes off. Should open the front end up a lot and uh, make it look a little cleaner or a little more open. Of GM stupidity. This here bolt holding the oil filler tube down is a number 10. Up here on the top side holding the oil filler tube on so it doesn't wobble is number 12. So you can't use, oh, that's actually 13. I even tried 12, it didn't fit, so it's a 13. Then over here, this fuel line holder was a number 10. No, this was a number 12. And up here is a number 13. So I don't know what their brain fart stupid ideas are, but somebody's got lots of air in their head over at GM. I don't know. I like driving their trucks, but uh, boy, they're a bunch of retards building them. So, yeah, why they couldn't use the exact same bolt, just have no clue. I don't think they do either. Okay, then the next part of this stupid bolt theory, the even dumber part is, this is a number 12, this is a number 13, this is number 13, this is number 12 over here, but the bolts are the same size. So they put a bigger head on the bolt. This bolt head's bigger than this one, but the bolt threads, and shaft are interchangeable. I can put this bolt down in this hole and this hole bolt in that hole. But yet, that's a 13 and that's a 12. Stupid. So onto something that actually uses the same size of bolt. Um, the water crossover lines. So there's two in the bottom there. You can see the studs and then two bolts on the top. Same on this side, two studs, two bolts on the top. Then uh, pull these out of here. Now I've got to pull this hose off. And then this water crossover line comes off. Oh, there's also this one here. So in the back here, you got to pull that. And the sensor right here. Right there. Guessing that's our temp sensor for the engine temperature. And uh, yeah. I believe the thermostats will be in here. I don't see any other place where they would be. I haven't changed thermostats on this turtle, but that's where I'm guessing they'll be. Up next. There was a stud there and a stud there, a stud there and a stud there. The other two were bolts. And then um, pulled this hose off of there and then this one came off of there. This little O-ring here is probably gonna fall out, but I believe that'll be in the O-ring top end all the kit or gaskets and o-rings that I have there are supposed to be complete for this engine on the top end so that should be a part of it there uh, gonna pack some stuff in the holes for now because it's getting late it's just about 10 30 and uh, next thing to come off will be right here pull this thing off little mounting bracket tab then there's another one right in behind there and then it goes over here, and I believe that'll actually be the return for the turbo. Turbo is coolant. Antifreeze cooled turbo on this thing. I believe that's where that's going. Goes right down into the valley. I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna, where it's gonna be getting its coolant. So we'll find out once we get the uh, Y bridge out, but for now we'll just pull those brackets off. We'll pull the hose off right here and then that'll be out of the way and if we need to go further with that get it out of the way completely we can do that later but for now that piece out of the way and that hose is gone it won't be in the way for uh, pulling the intake manifold off then we'll see what's next so pull this bolt out here on this other fuel line this one out of here and this little return line off of this little return regulator ties in here Actually, that might be a metering valve. Not 100% sure. Uh, ties in right there. Going back to the CP4. But this is all going to be only put in what we need. So I'm not sure if we cap this here or if we run this little line all the way over here. See what we can find for, for uh, delete kit 
fuel filter delete kit. See what we can find there. Um, unless we can just order that with our FAS. I guess haven't ordered the FAS yet, but it'll be a while before this thing goes together anyway. Ordering that FAS here in the next little while along with, uh, I believe I'm going with a straw. I just can't see myself sawing a hole in the bottom of my fuel tank when I live out in farm country driving through the trees going hunting and hauling hay in the fields and stuff and then saw a hole in the bottom of my tank to let it pull the hose off or something crazy so can't quite convince myself of that so we'll see how that goes but everybody says a sump is the way to go but I don't know um yeah so I'm gonna pull this off yet try to get these fuel lines out of here and plug that off over there get this thing right out of here like I said, I don't think I really need this because I can hook up a pressure gauge somewhere else on my fast system to tell it what how much pressure we're pushing to the CP4. I am not doing a CP3 conversion. Um, this pump is original, I believe, and it's, as far as I know, still in good shape. But uh, I believe that when they have a uh, lift pump on them, they do not need... The CP3 conversion because the CP4 is a good pump as long as as long as they have a pump going to them or as long as they're not sucking gas up themselves they have properly filtered fuel as Ford in their 6.7 uses that exact fuel pump in the CP4 they just run two filters just like Ford always has and they run a uh, a um, lift pump in the side of the frame just like the old 6 liter had and the 6.4 had I believe the 6.7 still has it in the exact same spot even. And they just run good filters in front of it and a lift pump. And they never have any problems with them. Nobody ever complains about the CP4 on a Ford. So it's the exact same pump. So that's, I'm not changing this. I'm just doing the lift pump. And uh, that'll be that. Getting to be lots of mosquitoes. Like I said, 10.27. It's still about that daylight outside. The beauty of living in northern Canada. Beautiful warm day out here. It's still 22 degrees C. Whatever that is, like 70 something Fahrenheit, I think. Don't really use Fahrenheit that much, but plenty bright out. There's the garden. Got some strawberries. Lots of potatoes coming. And the summer fellow garden.